Bali is a rich blend of tropical paradise as well as a place of great cultural beauty and consciousness. It really is an example of a culture and a place that lives with great sacred intent and is constantly seeking to create balance between the natural world and the human world, between good and evil, and to do so through beautiful rituals, constant celebrations, daily offerings that help to keep this balance in place. One of the things that one can really appreciate and feel in Bali is the sacred spaces that are fed by the human devotion. So first of all, there is the beauty of these spaces that have been created many hundreds of years ago, but the sacredness continues to be fed and nurtured. And it makes it possible when one enters to immediately have a spiritual experience, to immediately drop in to a deeper, more spiritual state of consciousness. One of the most striking things about Bali is the sheer amount of temples, shrines, holy spaces. They're basically on every street, on every street corner, in front of shops. One constantly sees people making offerings at these sacred places. So it's very inspiring to see how the people cultivate their spirituality and their sense of devotion on a daily basis. It's a daily renewal, a daily hope through the prayers, a daily setting of intention, allowing for intentional living. I'm here in Semuantiga near Ubud and this is a very old temple that still holds a great sacredness. Like many of the places here, the amount of temples and holy places is truly impressive. And that for me relates to the principle of the reciprocity of humans with nature. Nature holds its own energy and its own beauty and humans then cultivate that beauty, not only through cultivating the earth, but also through cultivating the sacred spaces, making the sacred spaces that are alive with the divine, that are tended to and cared for through offerings and through attention. So Bali truly is an example of how heaven on earth can be cultivated and created and enhanced by human consciousness and awareness. Many of these sculptures here, for example, are protectors on the outskirts of the temple, at the doorways, and then the inner sanctum, the inner temples, are where the sacred images are kept and where the offerings are made. And it's very impressive here in Bali how every aspect of life has a sacred element to it. Offerings are made, awareness is held, prayers are made all the time to keep this sacredness alive, to keep this reciprocity between humans and nature ongoing. Different shrines to different divinities are everywhere and amongst the very interesting ones are the old stones of old carvings that have been eroded, that are kept together and these are an ongoing reverence of the passing of time as well as the natural beauty of some of these stones and their essence, their essence that stays alive and their essence that continues to inspire and hold power. The water temples in Bali are a perfect example of that mix between natural beauty, natural power and the human element that is brought in through the statues and the religion. And this Pechampuan place of purification and healing is truly exceptional. The presence of the Shiva Lingam in a very womb-like cave with several places for worship and prayer 
is just absolutely magnificent and it truly combines the magnificence of human philosophy and religion as well as natural power and natural wonder. And the whole process of doing the water purification is such a profound way of remembering ourselves as humans, remembering ourselves as children of the divine. And that renewal is possible at all times through purification. The water purification here is a real lesson in redemption and letting go. The forces of nature are so strong and so overwhelming, so beyond the ego, so beyond our own little limitations, that one just realizes that our perceived problems are so much smaller than the bigger context and the bigger picture. And that is the power of constant purification, is to remember our true context, to remember where we fit in to the bigger scheme of things. And when we understand and remember our place in the world as creators, but also as children of the divine, we can be so much more humble, but also we can enjoy so much more wonderment and joy in this world. At every step, purification offers a clean slate and we can do fire purification for our anger and also to connect to our passion. We can do water purification to cleanse the emotional body Air purification is breath work, and earth purification is something like fasting or spending time in nature. Here in Bali, the water is ever present. It's a constant life force. It's an energy of renewal all the time. So it offers us personal, emotional renewal, but at the same time, the renewal of the seasons, the renewal of the crops, and it really allows us to stay in a place that is pure so that we can be truly present with the divine in our day-to-day -day lives but also in our worship here and of course constant worship and devotion is the fifth element the element of ether i'm in the inner sanctum of gunung kawi which is behind the other chandi shrines and this looks very much like many of the other monolithic sites that I've explored or that I know from history and it's very fascinating how this space has been carved into the stone it seems to be a ceremonial space very much about being in the earth connecting to mother earth and this complex was supposedly built in the 11th century but the style and the architectural features seem very different to later Balinese structures so my feeling is this is probably from a previous culture that was perhaps appropriated and changed and adjusted by the later cultures here Here at Kunungkawi, these rock carvings remind me a lot of Kumai, the pre-Greek sanctuary, and some of the sanctuaries in Peru which are carved into the solid rock. I just always find it very intriguing why people would have done it, and I have no doubt that it's for sacred purpose. A lot of intention, a lot of effort goes into making these sacred places so powerful. Here in Bali, the artistic forms aren't quite the same, almost the same, but not quite the same as many South American and Central American cultures. But something about the energy here, the sense of sacredness, reminds me a lot of South America. The balance between nature and the human enhancement of the natural beauty here. The spirit of building temples and shrines over springs and in caves reminds me of the same. I find that interaction between the human and the natural so beautiful with the constant sacred awareness and sacred intention.
In the middle of the hustle and bustle, there is this space that is timeless and the reverence is continuous. Bali has provided a powerful example for me of how in the modern world we can live according to sacred principles, how we can cultivate our spirituality. We don't have to all worship in exactly the same way as the Balinese do, but it's a way of living, it's a lifestyle, it's an intention that we can all cultivate in our daily lives. And one of the first steps is to make space for the beauty, make space for the rituals, for the divine, so that we can live inspired and meaningful lives, that we can, on a daily basis, cultivate our values internally as well as externally, through our rituals, through our intentions. I will be returning to Bali soon to run another process in which we'll be focusing on breath work as a means to enter altered states of consciousness and of course this will be heightened by visiting temples and doing the breath work, doing the meditation practices in these age-old sacred spaces.